This weekend played host to just one WSL fixture, but we're here to review it nonetheless. It was the rearranged fixture between Chelsea and Manchester United, where Chelsea scraped a 1-0 victory thanks to a penalty from Guro Wrighton. We discuss whether the nature of the win is a cause for concern for Chelsea fans, evaluate where Man United are right now, and assess how the WSL table looks after 8 match weeks. This is our Chelsea vs Man United review. Alright, let's get into it then. Chelsea won, Manchester United nil. Harry, is this a result we expected to see? I think so, yeah. I think one way or another we expected, to do, expected it to be a pretty close game, but Chelsea were going to run out winners eventually, and that's exactly what we got. A close game that was a bit shaky at times, but at the end of the day, the team who have won every single game under Sonia Bonpastor continued their run. It's yet another win for Chelsea, a really, really good result, a, a tie that had a lot of weight behind it in terms of it was very, very important for the WSL title race and the WSL as a whole. So a big game, the expected result, and a big three points for Chelsea. Yeah, I, th I think if there was any surprise, it was that Chelsea didn't have it as, as comfortable as we would have expected. I think that Manchester United in the second half were, played quite well, but throughout the game, Chelsea just weren't clinical enough. I don't, mm. I don't think in the second half, the opportunity for uh, Myron Mirez comes up to mind because that's one that should have gone in. But we'll start with the with the start of the game. Chelsea first half, dominant. Yeah. Absolutely dominant. Manchester United failed to have a single shot in 45 minutes. They had 31% possession to Chelsea, 69%. That is total dominance. Yeah, United didn't have a sniff in that first half. Chelsea were in complete control. And to be honest, I think that Bon Pastor and Chelsea as a whole were slightly frustrated to only be leading 1-0 through that Guro Wrighton penalty for... For you to, for, to, to dominate a half in such a way and to only score a goal, only score one goal, and that was from the penalty spot, that would be frustrating. Chelsea should have would have felt that they should have done more with the possession they had. And the fact that United didn't even have a shot, they were under no threat whatsoever. So I think Chelsea would have felt they should have scored more in the, in the first half and really put the game to bed in that first 45. United would have counted themselves very, very lucky that they were only a goal behind after that half. Yeah, uh, I completely agree. And I think when you see the outcome, when you see the result at the end of the game, only 1-0 to Chelsea, a fairly narrow margin of victory, a game that to right to the end felt nervy, felt mm. like Manchester United might nick something. You can see why Chelsea wanted more goals in that first half. And they did create three big chances. They missed two. The only chance they did put away, of course, was that penalty. But I, I think you look at the opportunity Chelsea had in the first half and I see, I, I see that there's three statistical big chances but to be fair I don't think there were any that were clear cut and obvious mm. um, bar obviously the one that resulted in the penalty Myra Ramirez picking up the ball there was it was really poor from United first half playing out from the back it's yeah. really really sloppy and obviously they gave away the ball Hamano uh, Ramirez picks up gives it to Hamano plays it through to Ramirez Ramirez then would have well ra went around the goalkeeper probably would have finished it off. It's hard to say whether she would have got there. Maybe she wouldn't have. I think she would have got there. Either way, Fantas Joyce comes to collect the ball. Obviously, Ramirez actually passed her and she takes out Ramirez. Uh, Tantas Joyce takes out Ramirez. Penalty for Chelsea. I thought it was an obvious penalty. I don't think that's really a point of contention. But that was probably Chelsea's most clear-cut opportunity in the first half. They had others. They probably should have scored. But... I think the biggest issue for Chelsea was that they couldn't really create chances. Look, United's defending was actually pretty good. Yeah, I think it was one of those where I, I, I said during watching the game that United clearly had that message of bring intensity and bring aggression because that's exactly what they did. To be honest, it felt like in that first half that they kicked the Chelsea players more than they actually kicked the ball due to their such having low possession. But I think that they United made it very, very scrappy. There were moments in that first half and definitely in the second half where it was just very messy. The ball was bouncing around. People were just kicking each other. I mean, Jace Ferreira and um, Lucy Bronze spent the whole game just trying to fight each other. And it was very, very scrappy from United. They did what it worked because it kind of stunted Chelsea's rhythm and it only allowed Chelsea to score one goal. But at the end of the day, if you spend most of the game going around chasing after the opposition just to kick them to bits, you're not going to win the football game. Yeah, and I know you, you joke there about the fact they kicked the players more than the ball, but they made 12 fouls in that first half and only made 74 passes. So it wasn't completely out of the realms. So, yeah, it, it was a first half where they aimed to be really combative, really defensively solid, and I thought they were that. They they did handle Ramirez quite effectively mm. in this game, bar the one time they didn't and they conceded a penalty. And obviously she should have scored. I thought overall it was a pretty poor game for Myra Ramirez. I thought that that, yeah. you know, bar that penalty, she wasn't really involved in the game until 
right at the end where she had that opportunity to kill the game on 85 minutes, which she couldn't do. And that was Chelsea's only real opportunity of the second half. They had other shots. They had other chances. In fact, I know a lot of people were like, oh, United were much better in that second half. They're much better than they were in the first, but they were still nowhere near Chelsea, really. They have five shots less, three shots on target less than Chelsea's, eight to three, and then four to one in shots and shots on target. They didn't create a single big chance, Manchester United. So, yeah, they gave Chelsea a bit of a scare at the end, but they didn't ever really look like scoring. Yeah, I think the second half was a, a mixture of United got better, yeah, and you have to give them credit for that, but Chelsea also got a lot worse. Chelsea looked very tired. And I think yeah. Chelsea also started to let Man United's aggression get to them a little bit. They got much more involved in these scrappy affairs. I mean, Aaron Cuthbert felt like she was like trying to fight and have a scrap with three different people at the same time. It, Chelsea allowed United to kind of work themselves back into the game. And I think Sonny Van Pastor will be very, very disappointed with that. The second half was much more even. It really was a game of two halves. I think it's a weird one because, as you say, United, for me, didn't deserve to score in this game. They didn't deserve to win, to get anything from the match. But they did well to kind of work their way into the game as the game went on. The, you know, as we got close to 60, 70, 80 minutes. United came closer and closer and closer because they did well just to keep going, keep being aggressive and, and get themselves kind of a foothold in the match. Yeah, you mentioned Chelsea's sloppiness there. And I mentioned tiredness. But is there anything else you would attribute that too. I mean, I, I mean, Natalie Bjorn had made two errors within two minutes to start that first half, and I think that. I mean, also, I'm not saying this is just a, a point. Is that that kind of set the tone for the half? Really, that it was just a little bit error prone from Chelsea that they just didn't really really deal with things. There's a lot of messing around on the ball, especially defensively, and you know, and then suddenly once errors creep in, we then start seeing Lucy Bronze getting caught out and and, and misplaced passes and headers not really coming off, and it's that just being put off slightly by, by you know, I think it was United made the change. Initially, they put uh, Jace through the middle, which did cause a few issues for Bjorn and Bright. And then they put Ma brought Mallard on and put Mallard through the middle, and that caused even more issues. So yeah. United did well. They kind of had a bit more presence up front in the second half. So you put some players on there who were just throwing themselves around, and it kind of forced Chelsea to make a few, a few mistakes. Yeah, I, th I thought we started to see the shades. I thought Lucy Bronze first half, we didn't really see anything bad but then yeah. equally you know i didn't come forwards she just got a bit too broad with with jc second half though i thought she started to really struggle and i mean i'm convinced she must be paying foot more because i'm not sure what they've attributed an 8.0 rating to considering she she lost 50 percent of her jewels and wow. completed just 62 percent of her pass i think it was yeah 62 percent 61 percent of her passes so yeah, I, I, I think it was another game where she sort of struggled. I thought that Bjorn looked... I know you say she had a few mistakes at the start of the first half, and while that may have set the tone for the rest of the team, I thought Bjorn was fairly good other mm. than that. I thought Millie Bright had a good game. Hannah Hampton put up a fantastic save. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a great effort from, from Jace, but it flicked up off of Nuskun and yeah. was a real handful for Hampton. But again, absolutely fantastic in between the sticks. I think, yeah, when you look at those defining moments... Chelsea players just came out on top. But overall, I don't think they were tactically brilliant here. I thought that they struggled at times to break down Manchester United. I actually thought United set up quite well defensively. The issue is they didn't really know how to move the ball forward. So they, mm. they weren't able to, transi to transition effectively. And I thought that was a real problem. Maybe if they had someone like Elizabeth Turland, if they could have cleared it to her and she mm. could have held the ball up and brought others into the game, it may have been different. But throughout the game, it didn't really feel like they had much in the way of, of transitional threat. I thought they would looked a lot better once Mallard was on. Yeah. And I think if if Turland is out for a couple of weeks now, I would rather see Mallard start than, than Rachel Williams. Yeah, Mallard looked really sharp. sharp and the, the footwork and then the effort that hit the crossbar was absolutely brilliant. You know, Millie Bright just couldn't handle her. And that's nothing on Millie Bright. It was a brilliant piece of play. Just a you know, tight footwork in a very small area. Managed to fashion a really good shot and was unlucky to hit the crossbar. And I, I think that's why some people feel like May Knight should have got something. Because obviously, as you say, the JSA effort spat up and was saved brilliantly by Hannah Hampton. Then Mallard hit the bar. But I think yeah. that saying that was two of their three shots in the whole entire game. I think that's unfair. To, I think it's not wrong to say they, they deserved anything from the match. But yeah, I, as you say, I don't think individually Chelsea were poor. I just think as a team, the standard just dropped in the second half. I think and a lot of it's fatigue, though. I think a lot is. of physical and mental fatigue. I think a lot of that was was to blame. I think for for United, 
Letizia deserved the three points, but no one else did. Yeah, Letizia that, was phenomenal. And she that the block, I think it was Carnaried, yeah. where she picks up the ball and is one on one with Letizia, and Letizia positions her body fantastically to stop any chance of that ball going to Ramirez. She forces Carnery to take it to a, to the right hand side and try and have a shot, and then she shuts that shot down. Yeah. Fantastic defending, perfect defending from my Letizia. And, you know, she can't really be blamed for the no. goal they conceded. So, fantastic performance again. Other than that, though, I don't think United were particularly no. great. They just set up well defensively. Too. Yeah. Tyler's Joyce kept in the games again. I think that's to be said. Yes, she gave away the penalty, but she didn't really have a choice in the position she was in. She had to cut. It was a poor piece of play, and they, she had to come out to Ramirez, and Ramirez did yeah. well not the ball pass her. But apart from that, Tyler's Joyce made numerous saves that. Kept the game at 1-0. Yeah, kept, it's fine kept in the end. Five. Tullis Joyce. Yeah, I mean, it's it feels like it's happening a lot when Atisca and Atalas Joyce are having to bail United out defensively and the defensive record looks so good. But, I mean, to be fair, I think Gabby George also had a brilliant season. Turner, she played well again. Yeah. I, yeah I didn't I, really see Kyner Reed and that's hmm. probably part of the reason. Yeah, and I think, you know, once Riviere is back to her best, because obviously she's got a, you know, quite a long injury, still getting up to, to match sharpness and getting sharp, sharp again, and Turner, Turner's kind of consistently there. Not bad, not not brilliant. But, but, but this is my issue: is I think if you put Dominic Janssen there, you've got one of the best defenses in the WSL, yeah, and then that's there. the big that's the big problem. But then you look at that; that's great. Everything else is completely dysfunctional for Manchester United. Their midfield pivot, yeah. it didn't do anything. I mean, they just mm. kept going around committing fouls, and they didn't have any control of that midfield. I thought it was a game where Bize had very little impact. I thought yeah. both wingers had very little impact. Jace, the only impact she had was on Lucy Bronze, just kept yeah. go, you know, fighting her. I thought Clinton wasn't really able to get involved no. in this game either, and Rachel Williams barely touched the ball. So they just didn't get the ball forward. They weren't able to progress the ball. They weren't able to create chances. They weren't able to really challenge Chelsea. It was right at the end where they brought on Mala, mm. they brought on Galton. Suddenly a bit of life came into the game. But... It was a little bit too little too late. Yeah, I think it's one of those where when both sides look back on the result, they will both be pretty content with it. In, from a Man United point of view, they were disappointed to lose, but to only lose by one goal when you were dominated in that fashion in the first half is not a bad result at all against Chelsea. And and for the Blues, it's the, the main thing is the win. A massive three points, even when they were up against it, even when they definitely weren't playing at their best in the second half, they still got the result across the line. They're still on for a perfect season. They couldn't have asked for more from today. It was a, the first half set themselves up for the second. They got a little bit fortunate in the second. They weren't up to speed, but overall, a, a big win for Chelsea. An important victory. Yeah, and you mentioned there the points. Of course, looking at the WSL table, Chelsea leading by five points to Manchester City with a plus 23 goal difference to City's plus 10. That is a big gap already. Yeah, a huge. very, very big gap. And... While last season Chelsea had a similar gap, they then lost to Arsenal and suddenly it looked like the table could mm. go. Uh, well, the title race there did then kick on. City were able to to catch up and probably should have won last year's title. The problem is now Chelsea have played City and they've played Arsenal yeah. and they've played Manchester United. And so you start to question where will, you know, if there's going to be a drop of points, where is it going to come? Exactly. I mean, the next big test, Arsenal at the end of January, that's mm. at home. But, you know, they, City have to play United before then, which could be a loss. We've still got to see City Arsenal again. We've still got to see City Chelsea again. There are, there are still opportunities now, but the problem for City is they've got to rely on either Arsenal or Manchester United to take points off Chelsea. Yeah, that, that's... And looking at United today, I can't see them beating them. Mm. Potentially, they you know nick a draw. And I think Arsenal are good, but I don't think they're at Chelsea's level yet. So City are already playing catch up, and the problem is I just don't see where they make their ground up. Yeah, and and that's the problem. It's already in the hands of the other teams in the OSL. Even if City beat Chelsea, they're still toy points off, and you can't try and win a league title by hoping that the the, the other teams in the league can come and help you out. That, that simply won't happen. But still a long way to go. A lot can happen. Um. Uh, I mean, if United won today, that would have made it very, very interesting, but that didn't happen. But overall, a long way to go, a lot to be decided, but Chelsea are definitely, they're in the driving seat already, and we're only eight games in. Yeah, and then on to Manchester United, fifth in the table now, 15 points to their name. They're level on points with Arsenal, which considering the tribula trials and tribulations Arsenal have been through this season, that is, I think, a bit disappointing for Manchester United, and a point behind Brighton as well. 
what where is United ceiling then? Because if the top two are un- unattainable, will they get third, or are Arsenal too too good for that? Well, that's the thing. I think. Or Brighton, yeah, of course. That's not cool. that's not what I'm at. Yeah, exactly. But I think it's it's a tough one. It's a hard one to look at because if you look at it one way, you go they're level on points with an Arsenal side who have really struggled, and they're fifth in the league. But if you look at it the other way, is that they're only four points on Ma- off Manchester City in second. They're only one point off third. Man United are only a couple points away from being in you know the the top three of the league and getting European football. And I know they haven't looked great, and the performances do need to be sharper. But saying they haven't played brilliantly, they've only lost to Chelsea. They're unbeaten before they played Chelsea. They're only a couple points off second place. I don't think there's. I, I don't think United can be too frustrated with how their season's panning out. I think they've started really well, to be fair. And yeah, worth noting, they've still considered the least goals or joint least goals in the league mm. alongside Chelsea. I, I think there are some issues in attacking areas and some tactical issues and and some off the pitch issues. But bar all of that, it all looks really positive for Manchester United. Yes. They've got they've got Liverpool and Crystal Palace coming up next. If they win both those games, Liverpool then test, the Liverpool will be very interesting. It depends what Liverpool side turns up, to be honest. But yeah, if they win both those, then for, they they will probably end up. Go climbing because I'd be you know I I think six points would put them in a nice position. Yeah, well Brighton I think will probably lose to Chelsea next weekend, and then suddenly we'll United see. fourth, and and Arsenal and City could drop points in there potentially somehow. You never know. Well, yeah, Arsenal, Aston Villa, and Liverpool. I think they should win both of those games, yeah. but we'll see. City though playing Manchester United right at the start of January, a huge game. That's a chance for United to to potentially get second. If they can beat City, they're right in the conversation. Yeah. Then if United can be in a position where they go into that game where if they beat City, they could leapfrog them, and suddenly that's an that's a brilliant success. Yeah, they'd need City to drop points before then. They would, but you Which know, they play Leicester and Everton. Okay, that's not going to happen. But they'll be in a position where they can go a point behind City. You never City. know. You never know, but. Yeah, it, I think it's shaping up really nicely. I think we're already seeing, though, that Chelsea are perhaps a step ahead of the rest. I don't want to call anything too early because this is we're in November and the season ends in May. So we've still got a while to go and so much can happen between now and then. But it does just feel like Chelsea are a step ahead at the moment. Perhaps that will change. Perhaps it won't. Mm. We'll see. And obviously, we've got to bear in mind, Chelsea are going to be wanting to compete on all four yeah. fronts this season. So will the squad become a bit stretched? We'll see. I mean, they're probably the, the only squad... Up in the WSL that mm-hmm. could handle a schedule yeah. like that, and and yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see if they can claim well how many of those four trophies they yeah. can indeed claim. I think they'll want to win the Champions League. That will be a real desire this season, and I think they've got a real shot at it as well. But if they are going hell for leather for the Champions League, do they slip up in those other competitions? And yeah. is that somewhere that teams like City, Arsenal, Manchester United could potentially take advantage of? It'd be very very interesting to see, but. Yeah, I think that pretty much rounds up everything for this video. A big yeah. win for Chelsea, a big three points, even the performance probably wasn't a five-star one. It was enough to get the points over the line. And for United, still some big concerns, and they are now, and Chelsea are now the only unbeaten team. They are still flawless in the WSL, which is crazy. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. But that is everything from us today. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Look out for more videos. We've got two videos coming this week ahead of England USA, so look out for that. We've got a big video talking about Serena Wiegmann. That's dropping on Wednesday. And on Friday, we're going to be previewing England USA, so look out for that one. But that is everything from us today. Thank you guys very, very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. See ya.